After months of work, I finally finished my mapping project. I can't wait for others to experience this map. Now, let's see how the map looks for everyone else. Wait. What? We'll need to download Compile Pal, but honestly, it's more like Packing Pal, as we're never going to use it to compile a map with it. Start by going to this site down in the description and downloading the most recent version of Compile Pal. Extract it to a folder that you are sure you will not delete, and not in your Gears Mod or Downloads folder, you monster. In my instance, I have it in my Maps Tools folder, separate from my Steam and Windows default folders. Now, this is crucial. We need to open up the vanilla hammer editor that came with Gary's mod, not Hammer++. Go and right click Gary's mod in your Steam library, manage, browse local files. Open the bin folder and locate the hammer application. It should be the one with the hammer icon. Once it fully opens, you can close it. Now download Source SDK 2013 multiplayer from Steam, as Kapowpow needs it to target something from the game specifically. We now want to open Kapow Pal, which should be located in the folder that you extracted in the arguably superior location that isn't your Gary's Mod or your Downloads folder. Once it's opened, you should be hopefully greeted with a Gary's Mod preset that is directed to your Gary's Mod. If you see nothing in there, then we need to create it manually. If you do see Gary's Mod, and it does direct to your Gary's Mod directory, you still need to edit some things inside the game selector. There should be three dots on the right side of the selection. Click edit, and scroll all the way down to the bottom, and modify these lines with the timestamp on screen now. If you don't see Gary's Mod, don't skip ahead. Click the plus sign on the top right corner of the game selector screen. Here the game configuration program window opens up and we need to fill some of these lines. Let's start with a name. Call it Gary's Mod. Next, give it an app ID of 4000. Now we will need to start setting directories. If you don't know where your Gary's Mod directory is located, right click the game in your Steam library, manage, browse local files. On the top of your file explorer, you should be able to right click your top directory and copy as text. For the game folder, it will be your directory, Gary's Mod, Gary's Mod. Bin will be your directory, Gary's Mod, bin. VBSP info will be your directory, Gary's Mod, bin, vbsp.exe. VPK will be your directory, Gary's Mod, bin, vpk.exe. Your map folder will be your Gary's Mod map directory, which will be your directory, Gary's Mod, Gary's Mod, maps. This is where people who have had Gary's Mod show up automatically should be at right now. We're almost done with the manual creation. We need to target BSP zip inside of our Source SDK multiplayer, so right click the game in your Steam library, manage, browse local files, navigate to the bin folder, and on the top of the file explorer, you should be able to right click your top directory and copy as text. Your BSP zip will be your directory, Source SDK based 2013 multiplayer, bin, bspzip.exe. There is probably a lot of empty spaces for those who did it manually. Don't worry, as we don't need them as those spaces are meant for compiling maps with CompilePal. Since that is beyond the scope of this video, we're going to ignore them. Now that we got all of that, we now need to create the configuration that we will be using to pack all the custom content for our maps from here on out. At the preset column, click the plus symbol and give it a name that signifies that this is a packing preset. I will call it PACK in capital letters. The next column is the processes from top to bottom that the software will execute in order. Make sure that the preset that we created is highlighted in red, and click the plus symbol for processes and add pack. We also want to add BSP zip as a process, so add that as well. Next, make sure the pack process is selected, and now click on the plus symbol for parameters. Click on exclude VPK files, as this will stop native Half-Life 2 assets from packing into your map. We're going to add 5 of these, so keep clicking the plus symbol for parameters, until we have 5 of them in the list. The first one is going to be your Gary's Mod Directory VPK. This is located in your directory, Gary's Mod, Gary's Mod, Gary's Mod underscore dir.vpk. Next is going to be a bunch of Source Engine VPKs. They are as followed. Your directory, Gary's Mod, Source Engine, HL2 underscore misc underscore dir.vpk. Your directory, Gary's Mod, Source Engine, HL2 underscore sound underscore misc underscore dir.vpk. Your directory, Gary's Mod, Source Engine, HL2 underscore sound underscore VO underscore English underscore dir dot VPK and 
your directory, Gary's mod, source engine, hl2 underscore textures underscore dir dot vpk. If you want to exclude Counter-Strike Source from packing into your map, and honestly most players should know to have their Counter-Strike Source mounted and installed in their Gary's mod at this point, add another exclude vpk and include Counter-Strike Source slash cstrike slash cstrike underscore pack underscore dir dot vpk. Note that this also works for any other games that you don't want packed into your map, like Team Fortress 2 for instance. Just make sure that you're targeting the vpk that ends in underscore dir and not any of the other vpk files. Next, if you have custom soundscapes in your map, you need to include a soundscape file into the level. Add an include parameter and target your soundscape file. For my Verruckt map, it would be the following. My directory, Gary's mod, Gary's mod, scripts, soundscapes underscore gm underscore Verruckt underscore v1.txt. Particles should be packed in automatically if they are in your maps folder inside of your Gary's mod. If for whatever reason it doesn't find the file, you can manually include it the same way that we've included the soundscape file. We want to end it off with a verbose parameter. This just gives you a list of everything that got packed into the level. This is good for troubleshooting content that somehow got missed in the packing process. Click on BSP zip in the processes, then click on the plus for the parameters and make sure you click on the incompatible drop down list. Don't worry, it is compatible. Add repack first, then add compress after. If an exclamation mark shows up, ignore it as it will work regardless since we directed it to our source SDK 2013 version when we set up the game's configuration. Papal is using Gary's mod, so if your custom content is inside your Gary's mod, it should find it automatically. But since crazy people would do such a practice, and your content is outside your Gary's mod, I will show you a method on how to mount your custom content correctly using GameInfo.txt. Open up said GameInfo.txt file inside your Gary's mod Gary's mod folder, and near the bottom, add this line. Make sure to replace the directory to where your custom content folder is located, and add the asterisk after the last slash. If you haven't made a custom content folder before, you can make one anywhere on your PC. Just make sure to direct it to the game info txt line to where your custom content folder is located. If you have folders that don't lead directly to the materials, models, sound, and particle folders, you need to make a new line like the one we just made for the other directories. For example, my custom content folder has more folders inside of it, and inside of those folders lie the materials, models, sounds, and particle folders that Kapalpal is searching for. So I need to add another line that has an asterisk after the custom content folder. If you haven't extracted a game's assets before, this section will explain how to pack custom assets from games like Left 4 Dead 2, CSGO, TF2, and other games. If you've already extracted game content and you know that you have placed it with the rest of your custom content, then skip to the next section on packing the map. Download GCFscape from the link in the description. Open it up, and you'll be greeted with pure whiteness. Go to the files for the game that you want to pack content for. The same way we did when we were finding our VPK files to exclude. We're going to use Left 4 Dead 2 as an example. Go to the Left 4 Dead folder inside and drag the pack01 underscore dir file into GCFscape. Then, make a new folder to where your custom content is. Name it to what you've extracted and drag the materials, models, sounds, and particle folders into the folder that you've just created. If you put it in the same directory as your custom content folder from the chapter previously, it should find the game just fine. Here's an example of my custom content folder. Now it's time to finally pack the content into your map. Open up Kapalapal and go into the Gary's Mod game. Select the pack preset we've made and make sure that the pack process is the only thing that we check marked. Add your map file to the top right, which should be the BSP file that Hammer compiled in your Gary's Mod maps folder. If it's not there, then find where Hammer placed your map file and move it in there. I also hope to god that you compiled on final before getting to this point. If you didn't compile on final, I'm coming, coming after you. Now that the pack process is the only thing that is checkmarked and that your map is now added to the map list on the top, we now want to compile the map on the bottom right. It goes by way faster than expected, don't you worry. I was surprised too when I saw how fast it packed my levels. At the end of the list you'll see a total count of the types of content that got packed into your level. If you see numbers greater than zero, that's a really good sign that the folders that we made previously are in fact working. If you are worried that the content isn't packed into your level, you'll need to unmount your content in Gary's mod. If you use just Counter-Strike Source assets, you can uncheck the Counter-Strike Source game in the bottom right of Gary's mod's main menu. However, if you're using a superior method of modifying your Gary's mod mount.cfg file in your Gary's mod directory, then you will need to put two forward slashes behind every line that has custom content being mounted and save the file. If you don't know what a mount.cfg file is, or how to use it, I'll give you a quick rundown. The mount.cfg file just tells Gary's mod where your custom content is located. 
since all my content is located in the custom content folder in my maps folder, I have to direct all these lines toward every folder that resides inside of there. Using Left 4 Dead 2 as an example once again, we're going to add a new line between these two brackets you see here. Next, we're going to add two quotes and call it the same name as our folder name. Since our folder is called l 4 2 we will call it that also. After the quotes, we need to make another set of quotes. Inside of these quotes, we need to paste a directory that targets the content we extracted from Left 4 Dead 2 earlier. Make sure to do this for every new folder you create inside your content folder. If you want to make the mount.cfg file process faster, refer to the FAQ section in the Steam Guide down in the description. Future. Future. We are almost done. We just now need to add reflections to the map. You can't generate the cube maps before packing level because you'll run the risk of having rainbow reflective props on your level. So, if you don't want your map to look like rainbow ponies started barfing all over your models, then do the following. <coughs> Go into the map after it's been packed with Compile Pal and check if you have HDR enabled or disabled. You can quickly see this by opening up the Gary's Mod console with the tilde key underneath the escape key. If it doesn't show up, check your options under keyboard, advanced, and make sure that the enabled developer console is ticked. Next, type in mat underscore HDR underscore level. If your number is set to one or two, that means you have HDR enabled. If it is set to zero, then it's disabled. Whatever you're on currently, keep note, as we need to generate the cube maps for both the LDR version, meaning value zero, and the HDR state, meaning value one or two. Run the console command, build cube maps, and your screen should be flashing images on the top corner. This is a good thing. Let it finish until you get back into the game. Once you do, run mat underscore HDR underscore level again, except now set it to LDR or HDR, whatever you're currently not using. So, if you're running mat underscore HDR underscore level 2, set it to 0 and vice versa. Once the game loads back up, run the build cube maps command once more. Once that is done, your map should have reflection support for both the LDR version and the HDR version of your map. If you can't load into the other versions of your map, or it looks full bright, that means that when you compiled your level, you didn't tell the compiler to compile both lighting variations. In that case, you don't need to pack the cube maps for the full bright version, but honestly you should have compiled both the LDR and HDR versions of the level, as those who play on LDR exclusively are, uh, special individuals. Once you have everything packed and ready, go back to Compile Pal and return to the pack section we used before. Once you're there, make sure your BSP map is still added to the top and it's located in your Gary's Mod Maps folder. That is very important. Next, uncheck mark the pack process and check mark the BSP zip process. Run the compiler and be patient as it compresses your map. Once it's done, check the BSP file in your Gary's Mod Maps folder and there should be a significantly smaller file size for the map. Now, you can send it off to a server or the Steam Workshop. The map is packed and is on the internet for everybody to enjoy. Damn, looks like you used a blindfold while you- Dude, just stop making maps and get a job. This is straight garbage. This is truly a map I exploit. Eh, it's playable space. It's playable space. Playable space. Playable space.